Today I'm gonna to show you guys the new and best way to sidechain an FL Studio. When it comes to side chaining, the way we've all been doing it up to this point has been simple and direct. But after the latest update, it might not be the best way to do it anymore. In the latest version of FL Studio, we can now apply side chaining with far more precision and be a lot more effective as well. As you know, typically with side chaining, we use one sound to control the volume of another. For example, we would use our kick to control the volume of our bass. At times, our bass can take up a lot of space in the low end. And if we want our kick to actually cut through and not get drowned out by the bass, we can decrease the volume of the bass whenever the volume of our kick goes up. And that's what side chaining is essentially. But this can be a problem. For example, if we have a very full sound for our bass that has a lot of frequencies, it's only going to be a narrow band of frequencies in the low end that we want to reduce. Most likely, those are the only problematic frequencies that are getting in the way of the kick. But if we use side chaining in the typical way that we've all been doing, the level of all of these frequencies, the entirety of our bass will be reduced. And this might be a problem. If we choose a very robust full bass that we might be depending on to fill out some of the mid and higher frequencies in our beat. By using simple straightforward side chaining, there will now be moments in our beat when those frequencies aren't playing and our beat might not sound as full and this might result in an uneven listening experience in some really severe cases. Luckily with the latest FL Studio update, we can now address this issue directly. We can just be a lot more specific with which frequencies we want to sidechain. To do this, we're going to be using the new tool in FL Studio called the Frequency Splitter. This will allow you to split the frequency of any sound into multiple areas and send each of these areas to a separate mixer channel. So for example, this would be a tool that we would add onto our bass first off. And then you're going to use these bands here to target a very specific area in your sound. For example, if I know that my kick that I'm trying to get louder in my beat takes up a very specific range. Here, let's say most of that thumpiness that I want from my kick exists in between the 80 to 200 range here. I can go into the frequency splitter that's on top of my bass and I can set this middle band here. I can take this middle band and set it to that exact same frequency range. So I'll set this one to be around 80 and this high range will go to 200. And just as a quick side note, it's typically a good idea to make sure that these slopes are as high as possible so our bands are now more distinct. So here we've split our bass into three distinct areas in terms of their frequency. And this is gonna allow us to control each region with more precision now. At this point, we need to send each of these regions to their own mixer inserts. To do this, go into your mixer and choose three empty inserts. Here, just for organizational purposes, I label these three inserts as you guys can see. Now you're going to go into the mixer insert of your bass and you're going to route this into those three inserts by right clicking and selecting sidechain to this track. And you're going to do this for all three inserts. You guys can see now we have these three little ropes down here. As well, at this point, you're going to want to remove the routing of your bass to your master by clicking this arrow right on top of the master insert right here. If you don't do this, we'll end up getting two signals of the bass and it'll end up sounding twice as loud, which we don't want. At this point, go back into the frequency splitter and go into this area right down here. You can see if we right click into one of these boxes, our insert that we routed to the sound two shows up. So here with the low band selected, I'm going to go ahead and route this to the bass low insert. With the mid band, I'm going to route this to bass mid. And with the high band, I'm going to send this into the bass high mixer insert. And now if I go into the mixer and I just solo these three inserts, when I press play, you guys can see. Our bass is now getting routed to these three separate inserts here. As a quick side note, you'll want to make sure to adjust the levels of these three inserts to match the level of your bass. Otherwise, this new routed sound is going to sound a lot louder than your original. So at this point, this sounds just like our original bass, but what's cool is we're actually hearing three different sounds combined. You can hear these if I just solo them one by one. We have the bass low right here. So if you guys remember in the frequency splitter, we're just hearing this section right here, the low area. We have the bass mid, and that's just playing this yellow band right here in the middle, and then our higher frequencies which is this band up here, the high one. And all put together, we get our full bass sound. 
And this is really useful because now we can apply side chaining directly to the one problematic range. That way the remaining frequencies will be unaffected. At this point I'll go ahead and do my traditional side chaining. For those of you that don't know how to side chain, I can quickly cover those steps right now. Step one is to add fruity limiter onto the sound whose volume you want to control and reduce. In this example, that would be the bass mid insert right here. Because if you guys remember, this is the area of the bass that's getting in the way of the more prominent frequencies from the kick. Step two is to go into the sound that you want to be more clear in the mix, the sound that's getting drowned out currently. In this case, that would be the kick if you guys remember. Step three is to side chain the sound into the insert that has the fruity limiter from step one. So again, you'll right click down here and select side chain to this track. Step four is to go into the limiter, head over to the compressor area, right click the side chain menu and select the sound from step two, which is again the kick. Step five is to set your threshold and your ratio. Just as a starting point, I'd recommend setting the ratio all the way up and then adjusting your threshold to control how low you want your sound to dip. Personally, as a starting point, I like to set it at around 75% of the overall output of my sound. You don't want the frequencies to completely disappear to zero decibels by just setting this threshold all the way down typically. And if this setting's a little bit too extreme, you can just ease off both of these parameters. As for the attack and the release, keep the attack really low and adjust the release so you get a smooth rounded shape. What you don't want is to set your release so low that you get this jaggedy shape whenever you side chain. Rather, you'd want a more smooth shape here. By the way, if compression as a whole confuses you, if you feel uncomfortable and don't know what the attack and the release and the threshold even do, I did a full video explaining how compressors work. So I would recommend checking that video out if you need help. And there we go, just like that, we have a lot more control over our beat using this new frequency splitter. Another cool thing about this is it gives us much more control in case we want to readjust how loud each of those frequency zones is on the fly. For example, I can boost the higher frequencies in this bass if I feel like I want more of that in the beat. And even though in this example I use side chaining to control the low end, you can use this for many applications. If for example the high end of your snare isn't cutting through because of an instrument getting in the way, you can side chain those higher end frequencies of that instrument specifically just to clear out some room for your snare. The possibilities are basically endless. By the way guys, I am releasing a course early next year, so if you're interested, head over to betterbeatmaker.com and join the waitlist. I plan on giving early access as well as discounts and free bonuses to the people who sign up to my waitlist so you don't want to miss out on that. If you guys have enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. My free jump kit is available in the description box below as well as link to the Discord if you want your beats reviewed live. I do that every so often and I'll see you guys next time.